Hello friends, I am so grateful that you have tuned in for Sunday School today. Happy Easter! It is so good to be able to connect with you just on this beautiful day and I hope that you are having a great day and I appreciate you taking the time to join today. So we are going to start off with our Bible story. So Zayden is going to read for us the Bible story from our Spark House Bible book. And so I hope that you'll learn something new from this story. We Friends, we are reading The Empty Tomb. That's a nice picture. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with first light of the sun. The woman didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus, his body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way to others. Salom, Salome and Joanna. Joanna carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Oh no, they had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The woman kept going to the cave anyway. As they came, Closer, the woman could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They picked, peeked inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brr, it was cold in there. Drip, drop. It was damp in there. It was empty. In there, Jesus was gone. An angel, an angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glowing from the angel brightened even the darkness corners of the cave. The woman sh shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. What? Hurry, the, an the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The woman did not delay. They ran to Jesus' friends, what they had seen and he heard. Oof, Mary bumped into a man, tripped and fell at his feet. Wait, she knew those feet are familiar. Hand reached out, he reached out to help her. What? She knew that hand. She looked up. Yes, she knew that smile. It was Jesus. Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus was really alive. The woman hugged his feet and shouted with joy, go tell the others the good news that I am alive. Jesus said, I will meet them in Galilee. 
I can't wait to see them again. The woman had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone Jesus was alive. What would you have done if you were of the woman and saw the angel in the cave? I want you to repeat that to yourself. What would you have done if you were one of the woman and saw the angel in the cave? Hmm, what would you do? Bye. What did you think of that story, friends? Did you learn anything new or did it remind you of anything that you had forgotten? Yeah, what do you think that you would have done if you had been one of the women walking to the tomb? Talk about that now. What would you have done? What do you think you would have said? I bet no matter what we would have said or done or experienced, we would have just been in some kind of a shock, like, oh, whoa, that just happened? And so the Bible is what? What does the Bible mean to us? Yeah, the Bible is a collection of stories that have been passed down for a really long time, and they're meant to have help us learn lessons, okay? So what lesson do you think this story was meant to teach us? What do you think that this story was meant to teach us? What were we supposed to learn from this story? Let's talk about that right now with your family. Thank you for taking the time to discuss that together. One word that we hear often around Easter is Alleluia. Alleluia. Say it with me. Alleluia. And we say, Alleluia. He is risen. Jesus has risen. What does the word Alleluia mean? Anybody have any ideas? Let's find out. So Alleluia means Praise Lord. Praise Yahweh. Praise God. It's a way to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, God, for Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifices for us and for all that you've taught us. So, Alleluia is a really compound, complex word, but it, it carries a lot of meaning and a lot of weight. So, I hope that you're able to celebrate and say Alleluia today with your family as a reminder of how much that Jesus loves you. So later in the story, Jesus meets his disciples again, and he has breakfast with them along the shore. So what do you think that would look like? So they just experienced Jesus dying, and then they hear that he's alive, but they haven't all seen him yet. And then they went out fishing and they didn't catch anything. And then they, they roll up to the shore and Jesus says, lay down your nets. And they're filled. And then they have breakfast with Jesus. What do you think? What would that look like? How many fish do you think were there? In the story, it says there were 153 large fish. 153 large fish, can you imagine? So right now I want us to find some items. Maybe you have Legos at home, or you have building blocks, or you have other things that you can build a structure with. Let's build a scene of a breakfast table. What do you think, can you do that with me? So using Legos or blocks or just toys, maybe you have a toy kitchen that has breakfast items in it. Let's take some time right now to create a breakfast, a breakfast with our family and Jesus. Let's see, what does that look like? Go have fun. Friends, we are going to be starting our greeting by um, going over some rules. So I'm one, 
I am not a professional, so be careful. And two, um, we are gonna be having, we have to use a flat surface. You can use carpet, you can use anything, but it, I think it should be soft. Yoga mat, blanket, pillow. Okay, and then three. How we're gonna start our drawing is we're gonna say the secret code. Okay, ready, set, namaste. Good job. Now, to start our yoga, we're gonna do five things. Okay, the first one is going to be called the up and down. We're gonna do it five times. And what it is, is hands in the middle, backwards. This is the up and down. Up, down. Okay, you can do it however pace you want and let's get into it one two three four five now i call this the backwards up and down that is going to be doing five times so what we're going to be doing is one two three Like that okay okay let's do that one two three four five good job next for number three we're gonna be doing hmm we are gonna be doing the windmill one Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Nice job. I think you all did really good. I'm proud of you. Okay, for number four, we are going to be doing, how about we're going to be doing touch our toes, for 10 seconds, okay? First, we're gonna be sitting down like this. Right here, okay. Ready, set, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Second, we're gonna do another side. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we are going to be trying, it's okay if you can't, but try to do um, touching your toes like this. If you can't, it's okay. Just try to touch um, whatever part um, you can. Okay, red for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten good job okay we are going to do number five our last one one two three four five next we are gonna be needing a pillow now friends we are gonna be doing superman so we're gonna need a pillow and you can use two pillows like this, set it in the middle of your mat. And then like this, and then we're gonna be doing it for 10 seconds. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good job, friends. This is the end of our yoga lesson. So every time we do this, if we do, um, we're gonna end like, we're going to say the secret passcode, the one from the beginning. Namaste. Bye. The symbol of the cross is to remind us of the sacrifice of Jesus. But we also tend to remember how much Jesus loves us and think of it in, more, in a more positive way. Not positively that Jesus died, 
but positively in that Jesus loved us. So what you need for our next activity is a piece of paper and some kind of writing utensil, marker, crayon, color pencil, pen, pencil, whatever you'd like. And I want you to create a cross. So you will need um, some helping hands to cut out that cross out of that paper. And after you have your cross cut out or before, whatever you find easier, if you're gonna, if you're gonna trace the cross on the paper, it might be easier to just wait and not cut it out to the end. If you are just gonna freehand it and cut it out, you might wanna go ahead and do that and then tape it down to a counter where you can write. I want you to fill that cross with the names of people that you want to pray for this week. Family, friends, pets, people that you miss that you haven't been able to see in a while. Fill that cross full of people that you wanna pray for. So let's take some time to do that now. Thank you so much for taking time to complete those crosses. I hope that throughout the week you are in prayer for those people that you put on there. And I hope that you post it somewhere that you can see regularly. So we're going to say a prayer, right? Okay. So get into a comfortable position, whatever feels comfortable for you. And take a deep breath in. And exhale out. You can close your eyes if you want. Or you can keep them open. And repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for Jesus. For Jesus, thank you for all the ways. Thank you for all the ways that we can celebrate. That we can celebrate his life. His life. Please remind us. Please remind us to always take care. To always take care of our neighbors. Of our neighbors. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.